Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Game Pass Grab Bag, your weekly podcast for your games from the Game Pass Collection, bringing you three unique perspectives from varying skill range. I am the king of the monsters for this episode. Andrew, with me, our monster who we show no mercy to, Keith. Hello. And with us, of course, our small child, Liz. Hey, guys. <laughs> and this week, Keith picked a game for us, and he decided to go with Undertale by Toby Fox. I mean, that's the guy's name, not, not a company. But Just good old Toby, Toby Fox. Fox. <laughs> so Undertale is a reminiscent of old school era turn-based RPG. It's set kind of an 8-bit Nintendo turn-based RPG where you are playing a small child, question mark, that you fall into a mountain to the world of the monsters and you are essentially trying to escape and get back home. Small child. that very much looks like Chucky. <laughs> You are an evil doll in this game. <laughs> we'll get into it. Calm down, Liz. <laughs> Very I know you have a lot of thoughts about this. So, uh, Keith, was this a game or a pass for you? Oh, this is definitely a game for me. It's it's a game that I've known about for years. I mean, it's been out since, I think, 2015. I, just, I know it's been like kind of a cult classic, but it finally came to Xbox and came to Game Pass at the same time. So I wanted to jump right on that business. And we did. And I love it. So for me, this is a game, but I will admit at first, I also, I did not like it. I was actually really, really bored. I think this game is a very slow burn. Just give it a little bit of time and it really just shows like its characters and it's, it becomes great. So it is a game for me as well. For me, I've been giving a lot of passes lately (laughs) and I feel bad. It's another pass. Two in a row. I know. I feel like I am usually like game, 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 but for me, it was the gameplay. I thought there was a lot of charm in this game, and there were parts that were really funny and cute. And at the beginning, there it was actually really sad. I'm like, how am I feeling things this early on in the game? And I love the characters, and there's so many things I liked about it. I just could not get past the gameplay. It's just not for me. Um, so I got to give it a pass because I didn't want to play it, but I enjoyed it enough that even though I didn't finish it, which is embarrassing because it's a short game, I, I did go to YouTube and look at a bunch of people's videos and stuff. I didn't enjoy playing it, but I enjoyed the story and watching other people play. So you're already pulling out the, uh, this would be better as a TV show or a movie, <laughs> right? She's yeah. not saying it, but she's saying it. Or, but you're saying it for her, rather. Yeah, Liz, are you, is Liz the new Keith now? It's just everything's, you know, it's a good game. It's just not for Liz. Uh, maybe it's kind of weird it's switching but i also noticed too that we're not really playing a lot of like liz games you know um we did slime rancher a couple weeks ago yeah it was and i was kind of i got burnt out from it but i did like it but i i feel like the games we've been playing have been really unique and different and you know that's more just you know is it somebody's cup of tea well next week we're letting you pick a game so if you don't like it it's all on you you can't (laughs) get mad at us okay I like how it's like permission. Like, Liz, you're allowed to pick a game this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. To clarify to our listeners, we do give her a lot of options, but she's just like, I don't know what to pick. Why don't you guys just pick? So then we end up picking. And well, we used mad. to do a rotation, and then we were getting listener picks, which we love, but then you kind of lose track of who's next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. We barely kept track of it when we didn't have listener picks. So Exactly. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> but anyway, getting in actually more in-depth to the story of Undertale, uh, We'll try to avoid spoilers. I it's there's a lot that's kind of fun to talk about, and we'll we'll try to try to be careful. But do I'm our, just gonna say do if a you're classic in it. Spoiler at the end. Spoiler chat. At well, the I end. mean, I don't, I don't know. Do we need to do a spoiler chat? I don't know. We'll see how much we need to avoid I mean, talking about. Okay. I hate to say it, but like, I feel like the endings. I mean, the way the way that you pick things because you can kill people, not kill people. I feel like you know how the ending is gonna be. Or at least I did. I feel like it's kind of like a... I don't oh, think so, actually. It, the, the, <laughs> it, it threw me some curveball. Okay. So the overall story, as I kind of gave a quick uh, synopsis at the beginning, at the beginning of the times, I don't know, it doesn't really tell you what like time this takes place, but there's the monster race and the human race. They got in a big battle. In the end, the humans won, and the monsters were banished to the base of a mountain, and they essentially were forgotten. And it's year 21X, and everyone talks about this mountain, that whoever climbs this mountain, they end up disappearing and never appear again. So naturally, your character decides to climb the mountain. And of course, with no climbing gear, 
and you end up tripping and falling into a cavern. And so right off the bat, it lets you pick up your character's name. And I right away picked Dummy because what idiot climbs a mountain that everyone's like, everyone climbs it and dies. And you decide to do it with no climbing gear. What an idiot. So anyway, <laughs> so you end up blaming into the land of the monsters and you are essentially, as I said, trying to get back home. And you're interacting with all these various monsters. Some really hate humans and want to kill humans, while others love humans and try to show compassion to you. What did you guys think of the story? I thought it was really interesting, like, when they were talking about why they hate each other. And I, right off the bat, I thought the characters were fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's – the story was really interesting, but it was the characters that really drew me in. And then so – I would go to say there's not a single bad character here. Yeah, I thought everyone kind of had like a a place in the game. Like, um, I cannot do these names. Torio. Yeah. She made me so sad. Like, like just like her, the whole storyline with her. And then, uh, how do you? Pap- papyrus. 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 <laughs> like, it's like papaya. Papyrus. No, papyr- papyrus <laughs> is like a type of paper. You never heard of papyrus? I know, but like it's one of those words that like, I know how to say it in my head, but I have trouble saying it. It's like, wor- sometimes I have trouble saying world. <laughs> but anyways, I thought he was really, really funny and quirky. And so as much as I was interested in the story, I more just wanted to find out about them. And that's what kind of kept me going at the See, beginning. See, I'm going to shock you guys. I loved the story in this. <laughs> that is very surprising. And and it's not so much the story itself, because, I mean, and on its face value, semi-generic, monsters, humans, roar, battle humans won but the intricacies of the character development and like the fact that this game in so many ways is very choose your own adventure i mean you still play on this very linear path you go through all of the same areas but everything changes based on how you're playing the game or the actions you're taking so i just i think it's so cool how like just minor a little detail is and i didn't quite pick it up right away so one of the aspects of the game, and it does tell you, you kind of have this option where when you're fighting a monster, you can kill them or you can spare them. You usually have to go through some set of different steps to allow the sparing or whatever it may be. But the first mini boss battle I got into, I just went for the kill. And holy <laughs> crap, does it tug at the heartstrings. Like, yeah. it just immediately, I felt remorse for what I did. And And the story uses music in such a way, and this is what I loved about it as well, is that the music just cuts. It goes from this like bright, cheery music to all of a sudden silence, and you're just left with this little like feeling of like, what did I just do? So wow, Keith, it made me feel things. Wait, it just wow, Keith, you just uh, burned through all the topics already. So uh, Keith's (laughs) done. Uh... (laughs) Well, I like because Andrew, you said that you went like full monster just yeah. like killing everybody so to quickly explain there is numerous endings for this game there's essentially a good a neutral and a bad ending and yeah i went through bad just kill everybody well, see i actually so when i stopped playing it was because i didn't want to kill somebody i i didn't want to kill them and i didn't really know how to go about not killing them because I tried everything. It was getting really annoying. And I kept, like, with the gameplay, I disliked it so much that, like, I would s- start playing, run across a couple enemies, and just be like, oh, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, so for me, like, I I didn't kill anybody. See, I, I'm with Keith where, like, the first boss, I, I couldn't figure out a way to spare them. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, maybe I just have to kill them. So I ended up killing them. And as Keith said... This game makes you feel so bad for being bad. Like, it's not like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm just being a jerk. No, it like. <laughs> but isn't it, it like weird that games you. don't, though? Because there are a lot of games where you have the choice to kill or not kill. And this game is like, oh, no, we're going to show you what you just did. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. <laughs> this oh, is yeah. Their family. You like, just orphan these children kind of thing like that. It's like that bad on how bad it makes you feel. Well, right off the get go, yeah. I mean, if you, if you kill the first person you interact with, they end up like apologizing to you and it's just this whole like sad feeling but they were just like i just wanted to protect you and all of this and you're just like well i'm a big old jerk so i'm just gonna carry on and what would the oh sorry oh no go ahead with the first person i didn't know what to do because i i was almost dead and i, I at was least like, warned I, you yeah and i was like i i can't kill this person andrew so like i don't know what to do i'm not doing it and he was like 
you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for me, it was I I was refusing because I like the characters so much. Even like um, Papyrus. I mean, he's so oh, fun- good job. What? Good job. Oh, thank you. You did it. He was so funny and kind of dumb like there are these puzzles that he lays out for you and they're so stupid like you don't think they can be that easy so like you're looking at it and you're like there's gotta be a trick here and andrew's like no liz just you know and so that, that made me laugh <laughs> watching liz try to solve a puzzle was really funny because i thought that there was like something more involved in it and then so like <laughs> how long okay, did it take like, you to just cross the red bridge that's my question what? This is this was the puzzle. There's an invisible electric maze, and it's an empty plane. And when the enemy walks the path, and it leaves his footprints. And Liz goes, "How do I solve this?" And I'm like, "Are you serious?" I had no. I'm like, no, follow his I thought footprints. there was a trick. I thought there was a trick. I was like, it can't be this simple. But you don't realize the character is like just really dumb. <laughs> Lovable, but dumb. I Like, as soon as it was showing his footprints, I was cracking up laughing, knowing what this game was going for, like, what the joke and the humor was. And so, for me, I, I loved the humor. Like, for me, that's when this, like I said, this game was a slow burn at first for me. And essentially, it's the tutorial. Once you kind of fight that first main boss, you'll kind of understand. Like, when you play the game, you under- you'll understand who we're talking about. But as soon as you cross that moment, this game's just, it's fantastic, like, on- ongoing just the characters, the humor, the everything about it. It's just the tutorial in the beginning area is so boring. It really is. Well, because part of it is like the walk speed is just really yeah. slow. And I feel like we complain about this every week. But I will no. say that the map is small enough that you don't need a faster walk speed. I just wanted it. I just wanted to walk faster. You and that's all there is to it. by Slime Rancher. I know. That, yeah. that game ruined run speed for me across everything. <laughs> I think, too, with um, games like this, I have trouble being rude, especially, like, uh, the characters are attacking you. So you'd think, like, I would just be okay with it. Like, when he's talking, he asks if you like the spaghetti, and he's trying to trap you. Like, he's he's not being nice to you. And I was still like, oh, I can't say that. Like, you know, I, I felt like I had to be nice to the guy. You couldn't tell him that it was really just weird. a frozen block of spaghetti that was inedible? I couldn't. <laughs> but it's so weird because it's, like, in other games – where, like, the characters are super annoying. I have done that. Where it's, like, they're rude to me. Like, I'm going to assassin them back. Like, I'm getting into Stardew <laughs> again. And one of the girls is like, oh, farming is so boring. And I'm just like, you're going to be rude to me right off the bat? And then, so one of the options was, like, um, I sneak into your bedroom at night or something. And it's like, so. It's with- come at me, bro. That's one of the options. <laughs> yeah. Just telling her her face was boring. <laughs> I wish that was an option. But with this game, I knew he, like, he was trying to trick me and stuff, but I was just like, oh, I can't be mean. But that's also what's funny about the humor, because, like, there's a couple times where you do insult people, and they're like, oh, you're just trying to be humble. I love you even more. And it's, like, <laughs> actually just funny about it. Yeah, but in, and I, he is trying to trick you, yeah. But he, I mean, they, they make him very inept on the outright. So, yeah, he's, like, yeah. this lovable kind but of thing. Also, is he goof. really? Maybe he's just playing dumb the entire time. And he's actually really smart, but he's just he doesn't want to capture you. Oh, no, he dumb. He, he's just <laughs> dumb. I like his brother, too. That relationship between the two of them, I thought, was really cool. Yeah. Oh, Sans is, is probably one of my favorite characters in the entire game. He's just... Underrated. He's just punny the whole game. Although, if you play yeah. like Andrew, you sadly lose out on the experience, I think, of a lot of Sans oh, as fun. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but yeah, he he, uh, he stuck with me throughout because I I did the neutral ish ending because I ended up I started out and like I said I killed that first person then I just felt so bad about it I like went out of my way to not kill anybody from there on out and but I was also still killing monsters sometimes whenever I felt like it basically but yeah I had this just kind of weird neutral ish ending that I went with but I I did start replaying it and I'm. I don't know, maybe a third of the way through the game, and I'm doing your play style, Liz. I'm doing the no kill for anybody, and it gets difficult. It, it yeah. does. So I actually, that's part of the reason. Like you said, you're like, you know, you're mad or whatever that you didn't finish the game. You took, I think, the hardest path in the game, and I'm fairly certain that that ending is like a 20 minute boss fight to get through um, when you when you do the nice ending. Because I was looking up some YouTube videos, and yeah, like the bad ending is like seven minutes on average, and those ones were like twenty to twenty-five. Ugh. Yeah. I, I don't think I, <laughs> I think I would have quitted the boss. <laughs> but there are some that are really easy to figure out. I felt like the difficulty when you're doing like the nice route, 
it really fluctuated a lot. Like, there were times where I'm like, okay, this is easy. I, I pet the dog and then, like, whatever. But there are other times where I'm just like, I, I can't figure out how not to kill him. And I just get so frustrated. And then I start attacking him. And then I feel bad. And then I just shut off the game. That was the way that I played. <laughs> That's your solution. Let me so just this, shut this off. Yeah, so, like, the I starting and stopping the game over and over again because I just... <laughs> Like five minutes in, and I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. There are definitely a couple that, yeah, you have to take like a couple of weird steps, and some of them it's just not even really outlined. I mean, the very first no. person, you have to just literally keep hitting spare, but it doesn't, like, instinctively, especially when you haven't learned anything about the game, you're not instinctively going to just keep doing that over and over again. Like, you kind of have to know to do it, I feel like. Yeah, so if you are playing this game, uh, if you do, yeah, they try to get the good ending, it is very difficult. Because you do level up. It is like an RPG. You get... What was it? It Was it LVE for level? Uh, it, it, just calls it... It, it just calls it LV, I think. Or maybe oh, yeah, think. LV. And so anyone who's ever played RPGs is like, oh, that's my level. And they're like, oh, it course stands for your love. And then you get EXP points. And you're like, oh, that's experience points. But at the end, no, they reveal it means something completely different. I, I don't want to spoil that one because it's actually a pretty funny joke. But... It is just, it's a lot more difficult if you're just trying to do pacifist mode. Because, yeah, like we're saying, when you're doing the fights, it's kind of like a puzzle. You just have to read what the texts are kind of saying, where it's like, oh, this person is, you know, excited. And so then if you try to do a thing, it's like, oh, he's not excited enough. Okay, so that means I got to do this and get him more excited. So you really got to kind of read the text and figure out how to spare these people. I kind of wish in... The only reason why I wish this is because the gameplay wasn't for me. Otherwise, I think it's silly and most people will probably hate this idea. But we played a game before where you could just, like, you know, the instant kill or the instant whatever. I wish there was an option. It can fell. That one? Yeah. Like, I, I think another game did it too. But it's just, like, I really wish that, like, because I, I wanted to have the, like, actually do the whole story. Because looking up on YouTube and stuff, I mean, it's not as fun. You're not, like, making the choices and stuff. I wish there was, like, a cheat button. See, I, people like me that didn't like it. I gameplay, I mean. thought about that, but I think part of the reason is well, one thing I noticed that because, like Andrew mentioned, this was this game was just created by a guy, Toby Fox. I mean, I think he got some assistance when it came to production and all that, but one yeah. guy built this game, and so everything's very, very simple. I mean, right down to the settings, there's really nothing you can change within the settings. There's no volume control. There's no anything. It just is what it is, and so. I think to have like all those additional things would have been a lot of stuff that you're just not going to see from that, that level of programming. But also the game is, it's pretty short. So I, I don't think it really needed it. And a lot of storyline actually happens within those fights that if you just skip to the end, you lose out on a lot of dialogue. I know. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just didn't want to play it. See, I thought that that was one of my favorite things about it is, the fighting mechanics uh, that are in Undertale are just so unique. Yeah, it's sort of your standard RPG. You wander around and screen flashes, monster comes up. And then it's sort of turn-based. You can attack or you can take these certain actions. But each each attack from the enemy was some different mechanic of kind of like dodgeball almost. Like you have this little rectangle that you have your heart within and you have to dodge their projectiles and it's it varies every monster to monster and how they attack you. So I just thought it was really unique and I, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I, I enjoyed the combat too. It Don't get me wrong, Liz. I do agree with you. There was some moments where it was a little frustrating, especially when you're trying to do the spare and you're trying to be good. Uh, because when it comes to the good option, like you're just guessing. Here's a monster. Do you flirt with them? Do you threaten them? Whatever. And if you pick the wrong thing, you essentially just wasted your turn. And, I mean, when you replay the game and you maybe understand, like, what's going on, you could probably be a lot more efficient. But if you're actually attacking people, there's, of course, like, a slide meter. And if you get it, like, right in the green, you do extra damage. But I also found the damage very inconsistent because it's like, oh, I'm doing 20 damage, 20 damage. The boss is at half health. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, you did 1,000 damage and instantly killed the guy. And it just, like, kind of completely came out of left field and just caught me off guard. But I, I agree with you, Keith. I have overall, though, thought the combat was interesting. You're normally controlling a heart and you're dodging things that are coming at you. Sometimes you have to stand still to let it pass through you. And then eventually the game will change and your heart will do different things. Like instead of your heart floating, it now is stuck to the ground. Or maybe you have to have a shield and you can't move your heart, but you have to block it. So I like that they mixed up the gameplay and kind of changed things up a little bit. Agreed. See, I, didn't, I didn't get that far with the shields and stuff. 
And I think, too, I kept in the back of my mind, I didn't get too irritated with the combat because I feel like there are just sometimes where, like, maybe I'm, like, having a day or, in this case, like, a week where I just didn't really want to play a game. And so I kept that in mind, too, where I, I was just, like, it wasn't my style. I wasn't really feeling it. And so for me, I'm I'm willing to go back and try it again. I still don't think I'm gonna like the gameplay. <laughs> so so you don't but think I, it's just the the week? You just didn't no, have the week. No, no. But I feel like this week in particular, I was just like oh, I just I, I extra not irritable. today. Yes, extra irritable. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it tonight. And then I was still I was still just I couldn't. And, and I know like you're not you you're always down to play video games. And sometimes I'm not. So I think this week too was a bit of a struggle for me. I'm blaming Stardew. Because you're playing Undertale, and you okay. just think, I could be playing Stardew. Can I just say? Yeah. So it's it's funny, too, because, like, I, I really do love, like, combat games. And all, I mean, RPGs and stuff. Turn-based RPGs generally are your favorite. Yeah. And with Stardew, it's it's so addicting to me that I, I will purposely not play it for, like, a year. And then all of a sudden, I'm playing co-op with Andrew. I'm playing co-op with my sister. I'm having my this own solo game. This is my bad. I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> Now we've, now we've even derailed the episode, not just the week. But it's hard when, like, you, you love a game and then you're playing a game that is just, like, not what you want. Or, like, the gameplay. And you're just like, ooh, I have another game waiting for me. <laughs> you just shook your head this, at this me. Is, this is going to be, like, five, six weeks of just passes for you because it's not Stardew. No way. Next oh. week I'm excited about. Maybe we'll with see. any luck we'll get Stardew on, on Game Pass so Liz can actually enjoy a game. <laughs> Start like a petition to get it on Game Pass. <laughs> Dear Game Pass. But uh, so Keith mentioned before that this game was on PC for the longest time. It just recently kind of hit consoles. Uh, it's been on Switch for a while. Uh, it just recently hit Xbox. But I, I do find it kind of interesting that it was only PC. Uh, looking at some videos, I kind of understand why. There's a lot of hidden things in Undertale. Uh, like uh, if you actually want to play on a hard difficulty... If you name your character, was it Frisk? Yeah. It actually activates a hard mode. Uh, there is like a secret ending as well that someone recently discovered. If you actually go into the data files on your computer and like alter some text, it actually ends up bringing up this like event that happens with uh, Sans, one of the characters. Like there's like some really interesting hidden stuff that's in this game. And it's weird because when you play it and look at it, it's super simple and basic, but it really shows you kind of how complex it is when you get to the final boss. I thought the final boss was the most insane thing I've seen in a while. What As do you I mean? said, like the graphics of this game are are like eight bit. It's really basic. Like there's like six colors, but then you get to the final boss and it's just a horror show. It, it, the graphics just actually like up itself. It's just intense. It's crazy. Yeah. There's yeah. It. it, it. Andrew and I had the same fight on that one. And um, yeah, that thing is, it's its something to look at. I don't even know yeah. how to describe it. Is that disappointing to you? Do you? Or do you think it was a deliberate choice? Or do you think it was, I mean, I'm what, like... Obviously wondering. it was deliberate. It's not like the, no, the guy who's like, the like, what? Program, 3D graphics. What I mean <laughs> is that you have one guy putting out a game... I'm assuming he has deadlines. I'm assuming he's do, like doing a lot of this himself. Maybe he wanted to focus graphically on one thing no, no. i mean still because even at that point i mean if he's got it's deadlines he's choice. worried about he's not going to up his up his game for that i think mean, he's yeah. going to stick to that to the whole 8-bit feel so that you everything don't think had. that choice is weird then because i'm just trying to figure out why he would go all out with just the boss like graphically well when you play the story it makes sense okay it, it, it's not like something that was like oh this is out of context like no it, it kind of made sense yeah i thought that was you said though it's probably one of the most fun fights of the game though, like all around. Just so I, he ends up being the last boss. It wasn't, but even the boss before him that I thought was the last boss was actually still a pretty interesting fight. But the I don't know, just the way this game ended, and I think we have we had a fairly similar one. Was I don't know, I thought it was just a lot of fun. And yeah, and and it's weird because I like I want to go back and replay the game, but in some ways I don't because it. It is somewhat repetitive if you go back and play it, but I just want to see more of the endings. I'm curious to how I can change things up. It is a bit repetitive, but one of the really nice things about Undertale is, yes, it is an RPG, but it is a very short RPG. Uh, to do the main story, the average time is about six and a half hours. To do like a lot of the extras, you're looking at about ten and a half hours. 
uh, like if you're trying to get like the achievements and stuff like that. So it is a very short game. So there is a lot of replayability. So even though there are like three endings, a good, a neutral, and a bad ending, there's like 20 different versions of the neutral ending. You know, you spared this, you only killed this one person, but spared everyone else. And you only killed this person or did this sort of event. And like I said, or even change some of the files if you play on the PC version. There's like a lot of hidden different endings. So this game does have numerous endings. So if you, it's easy to play with if you ever want to try it again. It's actually funny too because I don't know how far they kind of, I don't want to say break the fourth wall, but in some ways kind of break the fourth wall is when you restart the game after beating it, a lot of the characters, at least so far that I've run into with Sans and Papyrus, they're like, hey, you look familiar. Have I met you before? And it's like this whole like kind of running gag that they just keep talking about how you look familiar to them, but they can't figure out why. Like, it's actually really cool. Yeah, Papyrus, he's like, maybe you're one of my many social social media connections. I have many. <laughs> <laughs> so I just... always love when like a game does like a fourth wall breaking. Yeah, it, but I like how they did uh, it because it wasn't like overtly it. like, oh, we're in a video game. But it was just subtle enough that, that yeah, it felt it felt good. Which also, real, I don't know how we missed this. Is this game purgatory? <laughs> I mean, for this matter, you come back, It, I couldn't, from what I could tell, it wouldn't let me change my character's name, and then, yeah, you're kind of just groundhog daying it. Well, no, you can. It says, hey, this is a name you already selected, do you want to stick with it? I tried hitting no, and it wouldn't let me. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't try, I just stuck with dummy, because my <laughs> character's still the dummy. No, that's actually a good point. It probably is purgatory. You could have easily died, because like I said, you're climbing a mountain with no gear, and you're essentially trying to escape purgatory. You, you could make that argument, Keith. I do agree with you. Mm-hmm. Wait, you keep saying he's a dummy for having gear. Isn't it a kid? I don't know. I was wondering this, too. So, at the beginning, the first person you meet is calling you a child. but And treating you like a child. Yes, but I don't know. Because even, too, I don't know like what gender you're supposed to be. I think you're just supposed to be very kind of just... A neutral ambiguous. character. Yeah, just like... I, see, but I... That's the... Th- you, you know, it, I didn't even really think of it. I just kept assuming my character was a child. That is the only character I think that refers to you as a child. And but everyone then why else does Papyrus want to date you? Is that's that a pedophile? Well, trust me, oh, yeah. I that was my concern. That's why I was immediately like, wait, this is weird. I mean, you're a skeleton and you want to go on a date with me. A little weird to begin with, but I fell into monster hole land. So we'll go with this. But I'm a child. And you are clearly but a grown man long skeleton. I mean, are you I think in there? More... how long are you in there though when you're traveling stuff? Because I mean, isn't she, like at the beginning, isn't she holding your hand and stuff? Yeah. Like it's very like it was clear to me that I was like, but yeah, maybe you're just wandering around for so long that you're an adult and you're you sure you didn't grow. Your shirt is still. Yeah, but I mean, papyrus could mean play date. You flirt with him. It gives you the option to flirt. Maybe. Yeah, that's the other thing. So if you're a child, how does a child not a flirt? Yeah, I thought I also found that weird. And you're flirting with monsters, which I mean, I guess some of them are friendly monsters. I just, I don't know. You're just like, hey, I fell into a hole. What up, you cute monster? So maybe this game has slight pedophilia in it. So I guess forewarning there. Let's let's hope it's not that. Let's hope you're just the the first character, just thinks you're a child or wants to treat you like one, which is also a whole weird different what? thing. But if you're into that, go for it. But if they're a monster, maybe they can't tell human age. But also, can you imagine, like, a 20, 30-year-old and someone's, like, holding their hand and be like, no, don't go in there, child. And you're just like, oh, okay. Maybe I mean, that's why you don't listen you to that her. first character. I, I would hold her hand. I thought she was adorable. She did look like a fluffy, like a puppy monster. Like a rabbit cow. Actually, no. You know what she reminded me of? Yeah. Uh, Luck Dragon from uh, Falcor from NeverEnding yeah. Story. Yeah, I could see that with the floppy ears, yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd hold the hand of a luck dragon any day. But talking about graphics, I mean, did you guys, like, you described it as kind of 8-bit. Did you guys like the graphics? I did. Because what I liked about it is that while the graphics themselves were, I mean, they were what they were. They're 8-bit. And I, I don't know. I just feel like it's silly to criticize the game for being that. But I like that it took it and it created some sort of 3D environment in some ways. Everything felt different at least enough that you like had set segments of where you were within the map. So I think they did a very good job with the design for it being just 8-bit, and I liked it. I'm actually going to go off and say no. Okay. Yeah, um, 
because I think this is the uh, other reason why I was so bored at the beginning. I I don't like fault the game at all, but since they went with like an eight bit and the, like I said, the color palette there's like six colors. The overall world is very boring. And that to me is just really disappointing. You have these amazing characters that are really funny and interesting, but the world itself to me was just so boring. You're, you're walking around because right at the beginning, they're like, oh, you're in the ruins. If they didn't tell me I was in the ruins, I had no idea I'm in the ruins. It just looks like a, a, a purple land. Like that's it. It's just purple. And every once in a while, oh, there's a column. Oh, there's a vine. But it's like, this is supposed to be ruins. I don't know. I the, At the beginning of the game, before you start on the options, you can add like borders because normally if you don't, your screen's mostly going to be black and the game only uses like a really small portion of your screen right in the center, but you can add borders. And so I did, and the borders will change depending where you are. You know, if you're in the ruins, it's purple with bricks. If you're in the woods, there's some trees on the side. If you're in the lava world, like there's some, you know, like fire on the side. So it actually adds a little more characteristic to it. But for me with this art style, it was just boring. Wait, you could get I... it to, sorry. Okay. Can you get it to like auto change? I thought yeah. you could just when set you, one. When you set a border to, uh, I can't remember what the option was, but it was called like dynamic or something like that. I think it was. And so as you progress through the world, it changed. Oh, I did not know that. That would have been convenient because that was what I didn't like about the border was that I just had selected one and then it just got to be way too much. But anyways, interesting. I didn't really like the graphics at first, but I, then I I noticed that they were putting details in like odd things, or I thought there were odd. Like I was watching Andrew play, and there was this dog on I think it was like a bulldozer, and the bulldozer actually had like quite a bit of detail. And I also was thinking too, like graphically, I feel like um, Papyrus. I mean, like the way that they drew him and everything, I feel like if they went like more detailed, it might have taken it away i kind of liked the way that they did that with the characters where you kind of get like a hint of their personality but it's not like too much like leaving to the imagination i guess so i guess like when i'm walking around the game i was kind of meh like i I was underwhelmed but then when it came to actually like when you zoomed in on the characters and stuff i was kind of impressed yeah i liked i liked the graphical choice when it came to the story and the characters like i said for me it's just kind of like the world you're you're just seeing a lot of flatness but I do agree, like, what you're saying, Liz, it does show more personality with, like, the characters. So anyone who's played, like, old school Nintendo, Super Nintendo games, like, the way they kind of convey motions is it's almost kind of like anime, where, like, you know, if someone says something and everyone freaks out, they kind of fall on the ground suddenly. Like, they do these weird kind of jerky moments to convey emotion. That's what this game does, and I think it nails it. Like, there's a couple times, uh, like, there's one particular moment that made me laugh, when, you know, Papyrus is setting a trap for you and he's like, oh, it changes colors. And then he activates it and it literally turns to just two colors. I thought that was really funny. And it just literally creates a path for you. And he just stands there and just spins away, like, really <laughs> casually. Like, it was just, it's funny, like, how they, with the graphical choice that they went with, that it does convey this kind of motion. It's, it's like I said, kind of anime, like. Yeah, that that one gave me a good laugh. I actually, just, I I also really liked the variance in all of the different enemies. Like, I feel like we talk about this in a lot of RPGs is it wasn't just your standard, like, all right, here's a blob. It does have a slime, but there, it actually looked like a jello mold slime, which is kind yeah. of funny. Yeah. So like that was the closest to it. Like, just here's your slime, but it was uh, like the just different variants. Like I almost wasn't sure if I had seen all of them my first playthrough. I'm pretty sure I did. There might've been one or two that I missed, but there was like a good enough variance of them and the fights were sporadic enough that it felt kind of fresh every time you fought them. I don't know about you. I think my favorite one might've been the Sunder plane though. It's just it, the weird airplane with a face on it. Oh, yeah, just made me laugh. Was it? It had, it, no, it had like a blob on it. It was an airplane with like a blob on its head. Honestly, I have no idea. It just, <laughs> it was, it was just goofy and it kind of made me laugh. Like, I don't know. I think that was yeah. another one that you ended up flirting with. It, it, strange, <laughs> but. You flirted with a plane? Yeah. At first, I thought it was going to be kind of boring with the enemies because I remember, like, towards the beginning, you have, like, the, the little dog, and then, like, shortly after, you get, like, the, the big dog, dog in the armor. Yeah. I loved him. And you you fought them the same way, so I was like, oh, is, is there going to be a lot of dogs in this? Yeah, there's a lot of dogs. Now, the greater dog's funny because it first starts off with a little Pomeranian head, and it's like, oh, it's a fluffy dog. Then it stands up, and it's jacked. It has this huge armor and a massive spear, but it still has the tiniest little Pomeranian head. I, I loved it. Well, the enemy designs, they look like they're sketches. 
Like they're just these white lines when you get into combat. And uh, yeah, I agree with you, Keith. I thought the like enemy designs were really cool. Some get really kind of twisted looking and creepy. But then, like Keith said, you get some that are literally an airplane. You get one who's just like an eyeball. Like you get some that are just kind of goofy looking. But I loved the uh, the uh, enemy designs. I was just thinking, I wonder if a lot of people might not like the humor in the game. Because, I mean, we like dumb humor, but I know people who really hate it. Yeah, it's so full of puns. I, yeah, so I think it like it, going into the game, you should you should know there's a lot of puns and there's a lot of... I, I say, I don't mean dumb as an insult to the creators, but like kind of like... Dry. It's cheeky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I think a lot of people like it because that's why this game's so beloved is for how well these characters are written and stuff like that. I think the game does a fantastic job nailing the humor. And it's perfect because this game lands on uh, April Fool's or around April Fool's. So if you're looking for a pretty humorous game, this does it for you. This is the one for you. Um, But music, I think that's something we haven't <laughs> talked about. Good transition there, Keith. I, I do good Music. job sometimes. So, since the art style obviously is like 8-bit, the music itself is also very 8-bit. And I'm going to go on, a, I'm actually going to beat you guys to the punch. And for the most part, I forgot the music until, as Keith said earlier, you do something horrible, which if you were like me and playing for the bad ending, you're doing a lot of horrible things. And this game makes you feel so bad. And the music just, it's literally salt in the wounds. Like, the text is something so sad, like, I just wanted to love you, and then they disintegrate, evaporate, and the music's, like, dead silent. And then it just does, like, a low key, just like, and it's like, oh my gosh, I've never felt so bad in a game. And this, the music, I thought, but you kept it for me. doing it because I, I, I had to commit. <laughs> I didn't want because I knew you were going for the good ending, and Keith, I figure, was neutral. So I'm like, I'm sure no one here is doing bad. I'm gonna go bad, and my God, I regret that choice. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't even realize necessarily that the ending changed until maybe a quarter of the way through, and I had just already given up on killing people because it just it broke my heart the first time I did it, so I stopped. Maybe but, this was originally a sociopath test. It's possible. Like I've How done awful things. How did you feel after games. you did the the bad route? Like there's like playing a lot of games, other RPGs, and trying to go evil in other RPGs. I have never felt so bad. Like I've played Fallout, where I've nuked an innocent town. You know, I've I've killed families or adventurers that were just like innocent people. Don't care. Didn't bother me as much. But this game made me feel so awful. <laughs> But yeah, Red Dead Redemption, there's another one for sure. I mean, I just, I would shoot people dead in the street cause, and laugh about it. Yeah. But, but no. And it's like nothing. Couldn't do yeah. it. And, but I, th- I think it goes back to like you were saying is how good they do with just the character development and, or he did with the character development and all of that good stuff. But the funny thing for me about music. So again, I knew that this game was heavily focused on the music actually because I'd have this weird thing where I like fall into weird music tan or tantrums. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> I was going to say tantrums, but that's not the word. Um, tangents. Music rabbit holes. Yeah. Like rabbit holes of music. And I came across like music mashup remixes one day and I went on a rabbit hole and I found a, like a couple undertale ones that were just super fun to listen to. And I was enjoying them. So I sort of knew the music of this game going into it. And I, for me, it held up. I thought it was, varied enough there's like every area had a little bit of different music although a lot of it does seem to have like one underlying melody that he seems to just change around a lot but it's i don't know it's fun it fits and it never feels like it's too like repetitive i guess it's it's usually about as long as it needs to be so i I appreciate it for that i thought it was all right (laughs) i do remember it but i mean i think do the bad stuff that you did, Andrew. So for me, like, I kind of didn't see that big difference as someone was just playing the good. Although, I mean, kind of at the beginning, I will say. Um, overall, I, I like the music. I remember it. Um, yeah. I, I remember it. It was all right. I mean, the yeah. fact that I remember it, I mean, for me, like, that's pretty good. I no, like Keith that. never likes story. Liz never likes music. Yeah. I love some music. Um, Yakuza Zero, Graveyard, Graveyard Keeper. Keeper. <laughs> oh my god! I, I I see. I love the story in this one though. This one got me. This is one yeah. of those few few that actually grabbed me. <laughs> I don't know. 
So as far as the achievement goes, I highly recommend this game for achievement hunters. So as I said, the gameplay is about six and a half hours or so. Uh, unfortunately, all the achievements are secret, which is really annoying. I, I kind of understand some of them. I mean, a, a good amount of them are just story progression as you're playing the game. I liked it. You got an achievement that says midway point final stretch. So you kind of understand how close you are to the, the end of the game, which is a kind of a nice, I, I like that the achievements did that. Cause I, I remember Liz asked me, how far are you? And I literally got the achievement midway point, And it's like, I guess I'm halfway, <laughs> but uh, there's a handful of achievements that you need to get. Uh, just forewarning. If you are an achievement hunter, do not play evil. If you want to get all the achievements uh, specifically, do not kill papyrus. The, a handful of achievements that are missing. You have to get to Papyrus's house. And obviously if he's dead, you can't get into his house. So you have to spare him and go on a date. And then you can go to his house and there's a hidden casino where you are trying to get dog coins, which is funny. Cause I'm pretty sure this game came out before Doge coins was a thing. Maybe this game predicted Doge coins. For See, I, I, I literally had to look up the icon for Doge coin. Cause I was like, wait, is it the dog from this game? Did they, did they start this? I mean, it was all an internet thing, so I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some influence from this. Yeah, wouldn't Which, either. Keith, you were number one this week with I 960, did, did. Andrew 840. I didn't bother looking at mine. It's it's low. <laughs> <laughs> you got some. I don't... I See, I this is one of those things that... I'm, only because you've talked about it before, so I don't want it to be over. This game isn't very fun for... An, like, if you're an achievement hunter that likes it for part of the excitement of of the achievements because they're not correct like i don't think there's any of them that aren't story progression or that casino based that's it that's the only ones you have so like in a in a way i do wish just for i don't know it would keep me more engaged in wanting to replay some of these storylines outside of just doing them it feels trivial but i don't know if i've maxed everything out it takes some of the fun away i want the achievements to, to kind of guide me where I need to go. But at the end of the day, you, you are didn't right. Get an achievement. You didn't even get an achievement for beating the game. I like, you know, you first beat the game before me and you said that you're like, oh, I didn't get an achievement. Then that's when we looked it up and we're like, wow, you don't even get one for beating. So there's no achievement for good, bad, or neutral lending. It's just, that's it. Well, that's because I don't think, I, I feel like probably no matter what good, bad, or neutral ending, it just restarts you at the beginning. Because yeah, I, sure. I think, because again, this game's purgatory. <laughs> This is truly an April Fool's episode. I like the storyline. Well, Liz doesn't like the music. And I'm stealing your purgatory bit, so everything's upside That's, down on, on April Fool's. This is an abs- upside down episode. Although your shoulder is still the only thing that I can see, so that's that's not going away. That's just a thing we do now. I like your I shirt, really though. Just, it looks I really very comfy. I just work out this one shoulder just for you. Nice. Well, no, it looks like a very comfy shirt. Uh, this is one of my favorite shirts. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> but... Getting to our final thoughts, uh, Keith, what did you think of Undertale? So I was excited to play this game. I just, I don't even know if I'd heard anything good about it. It's just, from what I understood of of it, it, it just had an overall good vibe to it. It seemed to be a well-loved game. And it, it gave me everything I wanted. It was a relaxing game to play. It never felt too stressful. I loved the story. Like I loved the characters. They were just all really fun, really entertaining. I liked the multiple endings. Music was good, enjoyable. I think I got to give this game a 90. Wait. Uh, oh, I couldn't think of a good adjective. So just a 90. <laughs> I'm not even bother asking you this because I know you got to go last. So I guess I'll go next. <laughs> Such a gentleman. <laughs> so for me, like I said, uh, so I'm kind of a little bit with Keith. I've heard a lot of this game. I just heard people saying like, oh, it's a good game. But like I didn't know much of it. I knew it had an interesting combat system and the characters are nice. But like that was it. And so going into it, you know, I, I was looking forward to it. But I will say just the beginning was so slow. It took the wind out of my sails. I was just like, all right, all right, all right combat okay all right so it got a little frustrating but like i said once you kind of finish the first boss it it, the characters get so much better i was laughing out loud i thought the humor in it was really good it's very well written i think the world is just a little underwhelming i would have loved to know more about the world and the environment you just know just a little bit from snippets here and there but 
it's a short game, so it did not overstay its welcome because, yeah, by the end, I was kind of, I was done. I was like, all right, I'm getting a little bored with the combat, but I, I really wanted to know the end of the story, and I think the story at the end was well worth it. The boss at the end was crazy. This game makes you feel horrible, but it also makes you feel so good when you do nice things. Uh, so I think I'm going to give it an 8-bit 7. How about that, Keith? An 80, what'd you say? <laughs> 8-bit 7. Ah, uh, see, I was, I was trying to think of something. I just didn't want to go straight to 8-bit, but all right. <laughs> that works. I feel bad. I was going to give it a 72. Because for I, me... I give it a I'm surprised you're giving it that high. Yeah. Well, because for me, I really like the characters, the writing, the story. I thought the music... It, it did what it was supposed to in a video game. It gave you the highs and the lows. I liked it. It was enjoyable. For me, the biggest letdowns were sometimes the graphics. But for me, like, gameplay is just so important in a game. Like, I couldn't get through it. Like, that's how much I didn't like it. And that's just for me. I Like I said, I don't think it's bad. It's just not for me. And I just immediately... I, I struggled with that. If Not, you just fought people, do you think you would have liked the combat better? No, because then I would have felt bad. And then I would have... I, I just... I, don't, I mean, when I was attacking and stuff, I still didn't really care for it. So I I was kind of thinking about this. I, I, should have, I was going to bring this up before. You could kind of argue that the combat is essentially quick time events. And I know you hate quick time events. Exactly. Because it's very much something is appearing on your screen and you have to quickly dodge it. So, you know... It is kind of like a quick time. You're not hitting a button like typical quick time events, but an event's happening and you have to act quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I, I will stand by my 72, even though it feels low because I really did enjoy so much about the game. It just it sounds negative to me, but I'm not negative towards the game. Anyway, looking at Metacritic, it's still TBD. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> oh, did you only do TBD for Xbox? Yes. Um, it's in the 90s for, for everywhere, pretty much. Yeah. So um, for the critics for the other platforms, it's in the 90s. And then for users for this, it was in the 90s, but I forgot to write it down. I'm dropping the ball this week. That's okay. But someone who gave it an 8. They did a lot of good things about the game. Uh, creativity, uh, the characters, the narrative, all that kind of stuff. But with their critique, they said, here comes my problem with the game. Its gameplay is naff, boring, and has a difficulty scale that's so up and down, it made me feel a little sick. I realize the game wants to be unpredictable, vary its gameplay, uh, difficult when you don't expect it. However, all of the tedious walking and, let it, let's face it, ugly environments and the strangely easy puzzles result in a game that feels disjointed, unbalanced, at times frustrating. And, I mean, that was probably the most negative review that I read. People love this game. You didn't, a fourth cohort wasn't there? No. Earth co-host. No. Too bad. I, I'm sure he would love to call this a turd. I can't imagine what he would have said. <laughs> and an indie poo or whatever. I'll shoot him a message. I'll see what he's up to. <laughs> if, he's, if he's been he's able to do this. He's on vacation. It's the last couple games. Maybe he's... So Liz, would you say Undertale was underwhelming for you? <sighs> yeah. Nice. I, I, I'll take that one because this game was full of puns. So <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that one. I like that one. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Right? Unless Keith has another thing. No, I don't. I think I've said everything i got to say on this one. You're not going to extend this episode anymore? Mm, bananas. There you go. You just added a second. Nice. So getting, uh, So that's going to do it for this week. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, if you would like to send us an email, write us a letter, give us a game recommendation, we would love it. We've been needing some more game recommendations. You can email us at GamePassGrabBag at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at GPGBPod. We're also on Facebook at GamePassGrabBag. And we're also on YouTube, which is really just kind of posting our audio stuff, but we're there. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can find me on Xbox Live, Firebird, Z1952. I'm Keith. That's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I got nothing this week. He's Keith, the moderate gamer. You can find him at Keith Lynch one two one on Twitter. Is it though? Is oh, it? I don't know. Right. I, I just kind of guess. I think that sounds right to me. Is it? There's a one two. It's either that or Keith I... Lynch one two one. I don't know. 
And I'm Liz Noob, Gamer Tag, coming on Dean, and I'm on Twitter at Liz Noob, Noob is E-W. And yeah, definitely give us a, a, a tweet or a, or a Facebook message or something. Tell us what to play. We love trying games that we wouldn't otherwise think of. So Yeah, a listener picked a wonderful game for Liz the other uh, a couple weeks ago. So if you think you ha- know of a game that Liz would like, Liz needs something to get her off Stardew. For the love of God, please get her off of Stardew. Be sent For the sake of this podcast. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, my God.